Welcome, welcome to the Ethan and Elvin Show. I'm your host, Ethan Ziltner, and I'm with Elvin Mims. What's going on, Ethan? Not much. What's going on, man? Uh, not much. I guess take two on our podcast. Jesus Christ. Um, Kyrie Irving, he wants out of Cleveland, Elvin. What does that mean? Does that mean Cleveland's going to a complete rebuild mode, or can they actually sh- salvage something from this trade? Uh, I think they can get something out of it. Uh, Kyrie Irving needs... Uh, to make that trade happen, man, they they have the wiggle room and they have the the balls on their court to you know pretty much demand what player they want from wherever team, right? Because I mean, if you think about it, um, if you take any other team that they're going against, they can pretty much ask for the top player of that team almost. You know, they can put it out there in some kind of way. You know what I mean, well, they if have he goes the to room Miami. To they're gonna probably want Drogic. Gordon Drogic, yeah, him. That'll be. I think that'll be a nice. You know. Or do they want Whiteside? <laughs> I don't know. I'm just, I'm just no. I'm just saying. Like, if you think if they got Whiteside, that'll be a beast, and they'll have a nice big. Because you're saying the best player, so that's not a bad way to look at it. Yeah. So, if you're the Cavaliers, because what if you have to lose? You got him for the next four years, so yeah, you're not. You, you have nothing next, to lose but there. Then you can turn around and try to get. You say I want Whiteside for Irving straight I want up. Whiteside and because let's say you say okay, I want. Let's say if you say okay, now you got Whiteside, right? Do you say you do you try to like go and dump Tristan Thompson contract as well? Because you're you gonna have to. You might as well, yeah. You might as well. I mean, try to dump that, and that might you might be able to say, all right, we give you Kyrie and Tristan Thompson for Whiteside and Dragic, right? That's pretty much tit for tat, and you got a good point guard, and you got a way better big, you know. So you do have a better big, and you got a solid point guard. Solid People point guard, Dragic, man. Yeah, he can play. he's solid. He's, he's still a twenty point a game scorer. Yeah, he can facilitate and he can score. So. Well, it's not I mean, bad. Yeah, that's some wiggle room for him. So I just think he's at the point now where he's not, you know, he's done with being somebody's Robin. You know what I'm saying? Like, is he Robin though? Is he more like Nightwing? You know, I'm <laughs> just saying, saying though. I mean, but that's that's kind of it. You know, Kyrie. You know, LeBron's big brother, Kyrie's little brother, kind of thing. You know, he's at that point now where he's ready to take a franchise there on his own. You know, and then make a bring in players and build around him. You know, so. But in rebuttal to that, like, this is the only thing I'm just wondering. Then you just say, all right, but then when we were building your this team around you, we went and got you LeBron James. Nah, what the, they, what the hell LeBron is he just want? said, no, nah, it wasn't. They didn't, they didn't go get LeBron well, James. You know what I mean? LeBron no. James said, you know, I'm back. You know, okay, I did my time in Miami. You know, I want to come back How do you not want to work with LeBron James? So so. When he said, I want to come back, you're not going to say, ah, nah, LeBron. This is uh this is Kyrie's team now. But, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, it's not. He's one day. He's won two championships in Miami. He better say, okay, I'm ready to come back home. You're not gonna tell him no. You know, regardless too. You know, so I mean, because when he came back, that couldn't have happened without both parties saying, yeah. I mean, of course he had his his disagreement or whatever with Dan Gilbert with his outburst and all that. But at some point, Gilbert had to say yes. LeBron had to say yes, right? So, I mean. It's a hard. That's a hard thing to say no to. <laughs> yeah, I mean that's what I'm saying. So that's it's a tough one, right? So I don't think I think um, they them bringing well LeBron coming back wasn't the okay. We're gonna bring you in to compliment or you know this is Kyrie's team from the day that LeBron said I'm going back to Cleveland. Everybody starts saying that's LeBron's team now. Kyrie has to understand that's LeBron's team now, right? So he's he's at that point. It's been two what two going on three years now. Yeah, but now. Is this when you kind of sit down with LeBron James and say, I want to run the show. I want everything to come through me. I mean, you can say that, but, I mean, you look at the accolades, you know, the individual accolades. For right now, LeBron feels like, and and, and very Yeah, but doesn't he kind of want someone to? Arguably the best player in the league, right? So, you know, it's kind of hard to take somebody who feel like, and they play like they still in their prime and say, take a backseat to me. It can go vice versa, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's hard to tell Kyrie, okay, take a backseat to LeBron just as much as it would be for LeBron to take a backseat to Kyrie Irving. It's just one of them things where Westbrook and Durant. It's one of them things mm-hmm. where somebody's going to have to depart. And they, you know so it's best to get be something while you can. Yeah, get something while you can. I guess, okay, so we got Minnesota, Miami, San Antonio, and New York. Yeah. Where's the best destination if you're Dan Gilbert then to get the best value from them? Uh, you look at where you're hurting at, which is down low. Arguably, you heard other than Kevin Love, like you have no scoring at that five spot. You can actually move Kevin Love over to the five if you wanted to. He played five in Minnesota with no problem. Yeah, you, know, you can uh, you can easily move him to the five, and he'll be a five that can post and he can stretch the floor and pull big fives out. 
if he to go to San Antonio, try to get Lamarcus Aldridge, try to get like a Danny Green, you know, and stuff like that in that trade and make it happen. Because I mean, Kyrie, if you were to take Lamarcus Aldridge and Kyrie, it's pretty much trade on one contract for the other. Yeah, I mm-hmm. think the most appealing, to be honest, is just the try and do the Tristan Thompson and uh, Kyrie Irving for Drogic and Whiteside. I yeah. think that could be a good one. If you try and get a pick out of it, that would be even sweeter. But if you can just do just straight up swap for swap, that yeah. wouldn't be a bad fit. No, it wouldn't. For no. both teams, to be honest with you. I don't think so at all. So. And plus, yeah. you got to look, that's pretty much money. Because then you got Kelly Olenek. What you could do is let Tristan Thompson play – the five Kelly Olenek can play the four because yeah. he they just signed him there and he's their stretch big yeah. and you can just go grab all the misses like you, yeah, like you did James with Kevin Love Johnson at your three and Kyrie at your one that's not bad you squeeze a two in there somewhere right so your favorite player oh. Tyler Johnson <laughs> uh, that one hurt I gotta say ouch no ouch <laughs> yeah. and LeBron James isn't waving his no trade clause so he's still there he's leaving his option to go He's going though. Yeah, I think LeBron's in there. You know, what? Chris peace, Brown, Duke, peace, peace, peace out, Cleveland. Huh? Like, he's going to the Lakers. I don't know. That's what the, I mean. That's, of course, that's the rumor mill, right? He headed to L.A. He headed to L.A. But if you like, I said, if you think that L.A. is going to be able to keep what they have and get LeBron, like, no, something will have to get there. Have to go, and it's going. Um, I'm telling you, it's going to be. Trust me. If I, if a team come to you right now and say. We'll give DeMar you the, we'll, we'll give you, we'll give you the we'll give you LeBron, and we want Julius Randle and Brandon Ingram. Well, let's say the Raptors. The we're Raptors. The Raptors now. <sighs> he wants to come to Toronto too, baby. Why not? <laughs> okay, let's say he <laughs> let's say he want to come to Toronto. Uh, Lowry Nabaka. Dude, nah. I say DeRozan. I, I, nah, look, no. He has to get at least DeRozan, right? Nah. Uh, you, if you go there, you're gonna have like Toronto. They're not gonna part with DeRozan. That's working. They're not going to part with that. They're not going to part with Yeah, but if Parker. LeBron James is on the table? So, for what? You're just trading know. one for the other, pretty much, right? Like, yeah. You know, I mean, yeah, I'll tell Larry. All right, Larry. <laughs> we know we just inked you, but hey. Yeah, I guess yeah. you do Larry. I'd be like, you want Norman Powell and DeLon Wright? Here's no, some I'd, I'd be like, I'd be like, here go Larry. Capo- here go Capoco. <laughs> here go Nagara. Here's Valentunas. Yeah, we can give you a half of Valentunas. Like, half of them got to stay. <laughs> no, nah, man. Like, seriously, though, man. Like, you could, but, dude, like, you know, it's just like when, you, when you're talking about having a player like LeBron that's, you know, will Ray wave his no trade clause, man. That gives you room that, like, you can demand whatever you want from a team. And they so he's got, still holding gonna, Cleveland they're hostage. Gonna, and they're going to listen. You know, like, you have to. there's not one team that's like this right here. Hey, LeBron, they're on the phone. This is the phone. They're talking about a possible trade. LeBron, like, when they say that, boom, you automatically know it's going to be one of your top two or three players. You, has to be, yeah. This has to be. So, I mean, this is, you know, he's leaving that open, though, so he can. He's still going. Yeah, so he can. No. It was nice knowing you. It's not going to hurt his legacy, is it, Alvin? No, I don't know, man. That bouncing around like that can. Really? Cleveland you to Miami so? to Cleveland to what somewhere else. What about Shaq? Else. Let's use Shaq as an example. Yeah, but Shaq, I mean, pretty much Shaq, all Shaq's happened at the back end of his shit, and he was just kind of like problem after problem. He didn't leave he Orlando was, on the best he of terms, just, to be honest with there, you. But he was young, too. I mean, he couldn't, you couldn't, like, he was young. They LeBron had a, James was they a younger had a man. Dis- they had a disagreement, but he left. He went to Miami. I guess the he, decision doesn't And then help. he turned around, and he comes back to Cleveland. So what it is, he leaves Cleveland, where, you know, they go to the finals and all that stuff. Then he turns around and go to Miami, and then they win the two championships in the finals and stuff. And then he turns around and he goes back to Cleveland, and they have a good run and do a two of them, you know, two finals, win one, make it to the finals in the other one. Things starting to look rocky now. I'm going to leave my way. You know what I'm saying? My trade club, I'm going to wave that. So now it's like I only want to be there if it's going good. You know, like I don't want to, you know, be there in it and – it's like an AAU everything, player. Everything is rocky, and we got to, like, what's my name? I mean, the storm, to his defense, no. he probably like, you know what, I'm 32, 33. I, I don't have time to, you know, just to waste three, four years no, in a rebuilding really doesn't. process. So, I mean, is this I, where Dan Gilbert can kind of say, well, let me do my thing because I would have kept Andrew Wiggins. I would have kept and not signed goddamn – J.R. Smith to $17 million a goddamn year. Yeah. Have him on Shumpert be your backup shooting guard at $9 million a year. Yeah. but I don't I mean, know, stuff like that. 
Yeah, mm-hmm. it's just it's one of them things, man. So it's oh, well. like the only time I tell, man, see how it happens. Yeah, I think, yeah, because they were spending a lot of money. That's the thing. Dan Gilbert's spending $140 million bucks to renovate Quicken Loans Arena because he's damn set on Hellbent setting on hosting the All-Star Game in 2020 or 2021. He's put a bid in for both years, so he's spending a lot of money. And that's the first thing they said is, well, you have to renovate it because technically it's the oldest of the arenas, and they voted Quicken Loans Arena, now that Key Arena is not around, Quicken Loans Arena is apparently next to the Bradley Center, Elvin. is one of the worst arenas to play in. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I don't okay, know. Yeah, never played in, but I've never played in either, Frank. I can't tell you. <laughs> <laughs> 2K, they seem fine. Yeah, they do. Don't they? <laughs> All the floors are shiny. <laughs> well, what would be the problem with the Bradley Center? I never really understood that I one. I mean, but you got yeah, it's just, just old. It's time, yeah. It's just time. I mean, they had to redo them all, right? Yeah, they you remember the Lakers used to play in the Forum, and then they went to the Staples. So Twenty five years, you got to start renovating, know, eh? Yeah, you look Boston, they had to redo all that stuff. The Garden apparently yeah, was chaos, brutal. So, I mean, that's just how it is. I mean, you can't say, okay, we're gonna have top tier athletes, and we expect the turnout in the in the, the to us. Yeah, it looks. You know, we walk in, we like, wow. It just we just in wow because that's why all these great banners. players. Yeah, that's why all these great players play, and then you know you turn around and everything's just looking terrible. So it just. Like I say, yeah, it's just all a renovation, so. Ah, uh, I see. Okay. Um. Fair enough, then, I guess. I don't know. Hopefully, they'll figure it out. I mean, life of a billionaire. Oh, boy. Look at me, huh? That's a tough life. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, th- I think on an NBA team, it'll be the least of my headaches, though, to be honest with you. Yeah, I wonder. I, well, yeah. I don't know. But anyways, so this time of year, it's getting a little slower on the NBA news. So the owners, this is when they like to have their meetings. And one of the things they're doing is they changed – some of the timeout scheduling for the NBA. They're going down from 18 timeouts total for the game for each team to 14, I guess. I don't know. They're saying seven per half. And I guess that makes sense. They can't really cut too much out because we were talking about this prior to the podcast that they can't take too many away. Otherwise, if they do, they're going to have nothing in terms of creating revenue because they have to have some spots for you know getting money and generating some ad revenue from sponsorships otherwise you know they're not gonna be able to pay all their Kyle Lowry the 34 million bucks a year Elvin right I mean um, (laughs) let's not talk about that man (laughs) <laughs> you made more than Michael Jordan ever made. You know, you yeah. realize that Michael Jordan's highest contract was still a lot of money at the time. Was yeah. thirty three point three million dollars in the ninety seven season. Yeah, like, but I mean, it's God like damn. I say, it's just even like we said before. If you look at contracts from two thousand twelve to now, you know the top contracts then was nineteen twenty million a year. Mm-hmm. You know now it's so. <sighs> Million over thirty four million bucks. Yeah, thirty four million in nineteen ninety seven. That's a lot of goddamn money. <laughs> so it's like not including your shoes. Yeah, and that's what I'm saying. Shit. But anyways, yeah, the timeouts go from full timeouts go to ninety seconds to seventy five seconds, and a twenty second timeout is isn't actually twenty seconds. I didn't know that one. It's a uh, sixty seconds is what it used to be, and now it's forty seconds. I had no idea about this one, Elvin. I ref basketball, so I just. Assumed all professional levels went a minute and a half yeah. for, you know, full, full's a, you know, minute timeout and a half is 30 seconds, but I don't know. You never, never really knew that one for the NBA. I guess it makes sense that they have to, you know, put, let the commercials play for a little bit there, yeah, right? I mean, you got to let the Hurts Enterprise run. <laughs> we'll, Enterprise, we pick you up. <laughs> the general, the general's you insurance. Look, general insurance, you got to have all that, all that money got to roll in. So. And here's one where I think the NBA just has nothing better to do but just kind of complain and have something to vote on, I guess, or just have everybody agree. They're trying to look at delay games between free throw attempts, meaning one of the scenarios is if Elvin's shooting a free throw and I'm on the opposing team, I go to my teammates and say, hey, uh, you two switch spots here. You know, you don't rebound on this side. You're going to rebound on the left side. And who are you guarding? Are you guarding you know, uh, Kyrie Irving? Are you guarding LeBron? Okay, I got Tristan Thompson. Okay, who's got this guy? Who's got him? And the NBA, I guess, is trying to look to, to wait, get rid of those. So I don't know. Yeah, how but that's what is that work. hurting, though? I mean, two, I honestly have two no players idea. players talking on the court versus 15. I feel like that's some wasted screaming. data they looked yeah, into. Yeah, that's just like somebody, you know. It's just somebody just sat down and like. If anything, shouldn't they just take the – 
to the 10 seconds to give a player a shoot to shoot a free throw? Should you just get you guys like seven seconds? Is that enough time, you think? 10 seconds is fine. I mean, it's very rare people use the entire 10 seconds. That's what I'm wondering. Do you think seven seconds would be a fine I thing mean, to catch? I mean, put a time, right? That's just something that shouldn't even be messed with. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's just, you get up, you yeah. take it a couple, two, three dribbles, you know, take a deep breath, shoot your free throw. You know, and if it take 10 seconds, fine. If it take five, fine. You know, it's just. I don't. Yeah, I think I, that's just. It's been like that for the longest, and it's never mm-hmm. been a problem. So like, why you know, you know, just. And I don't understand why they try to use a technical. Like this is something weird where they, if that is the scenario where they're trying to get rid of, I would like to see how many times that's actually happening in a game. And if it is, why don't you just get the ref to kind of go to the player and just go, hey, you know, stop. Or even if it's, I don't understand how that. Like you said, I don't understand how that's a problem because you're just being strategic, right? There's nothing. I don't know what really delaying the game. I guess you say. Yeah, yeah. I don't know, man. It's stupid rules. Yeah, and uh, halftime is going from twenty minutes to fifteen minutes. I don't know. I didn't really think that was a big deal either. But I guess I don't know. Is fifteen minutes even too long though? Should you even give them like less time? Do you really want to cool down for fifteen minutes? I mean, fifteen minutes is enough. I mean, you get in the. You think about it, it's gonna take a good five minutes for everybody to get in the bank. You know, get a drink and something. Like, yeah, and the coach talking. Then you want to come out and. Shoot around, you know, the basket a couple of minutes, or you know, do a little bit, a couple more minutes of stretching or whatever. So, I think that's that's fair enough, you know. Well, what would whatever. you do at half times? Me? Yeah, I would go in. You know, everybody getting in. You know, you had a talking. You know, different people talking about different games. And the coach hush everybody up. You know, hey, we're doing this well. We need to pick up on this, or you know, vice versa. And all right, you know, let's go out. This is our game plan. This is how we're going to defend this. You know, we're going to do this. Let's make this player do this or that. You know, after that, you go back out by the time. You got to think about that time. They have half court, like halftime entertainment anyways. Mm. So a lot of times we would go out and have to sit for a couple of minutes till the entertainment finish and then go on the court, you know, shoot around a little bit, and then it's ready to go. And are you shooting, just a quick little, are you shooting threes right off the bat or when you go and shoot on the other net, are you just starting off at the free throw line first? No, you just start off, like, it just depends on how your half went, right? Like, if you had a first mm-hmm. half where you, you know, knock down a few trays or something, you want a couple <clears> mid-range, step out to the tray, see how it feels, and, you know, so be it. But, um, yeah, I think that's 15, 20 minutes is, is, an, is enough time. Yeah, fair enough. Um, we're going to move on to some NBL news, Elvin. Um, so, a little weird scenario going on with St. John's. They got two weird scenarios here. So, we got the NBL has got an unknown group ready to purchase the expansion rights, and they have the expansion rights for a St. John's team. But mm-hmm. the problem is they won't technically have an arena to play in because the person who owned, who's renting the arena – his name's Tony Kenny. He's a prominent business owner out in St. John's. He owns the lease for the year. So I guess they have to work out some sort of an agreement here. I'm wondering if it's going to be a buyout or if just, I don't know. I have no idea, actually, because that's very confusing to deal with. How do you go about doing with that? Like, how does if he has the lease, does that mean he has the lease for a basketball team or does he have the lease just to rent it out? I don't know. Like, uh, I don't That's a tough one. I mean, you have to probably get a little more information on that, you know, but yeah, I just it wasn't much. Yeah. I'm just saying like, um, <clears throat> it's just, it's one of those things where, um, I think it's before deciding or before going on. And like I said, I'm just saying from, you know, what you just said and, and my perspective before going out, looking at new ownership for a spot and just make sure that, there's absolutely no ownership there already. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I and felt was, like this was something that would already come up, you know what I you mean? You know, yeah. So, I mean, that's just like, you know, two different parties and two different sides of it just colliding right there. And now you're trying to figure out, you know, what's going to happen. I think ultimately like, they'll figure some kind of way to make it work, you know, whether it's, you know, because, I mean, if you look at it on this level, um, it just depends on, like, the your, your turnout and fan base and everything else. That's how much money you're you're bringing in in that season. So, if you tell me, okay, put in, you know, instead of putting in a full, of, you know, two three hundred thousand, we have, you know, three people that want to go in. So all you have to do is put in a hundred thousand, right? So you don't really have to worry about, you know, so much of a loss if it don't go good. You know, whatever you you pick up, you pick up, and it goes from there. So I think it's always a way to sit down. As long as people don't try to come in with the whole, you know, chest puffed out, this is my show kind of thing. Sit Doesn't down. work well for anyone. Yeah, just sit down and figure <laughs> out a way to make it work. I'm pretty sure they can come to some kind of agreement with it, though. 
Yeah, fair enough. Because I, when I was reading this, that like I, like you said, I, as I'm reading it, I kind of thought to myself, well, how did this not come up even before it got press released? Like, how did yeah. not anyone go, well, <clears throat> we're gonna have to work around this. Actually, we're probably well, gonna have I to mean, buy them out. There's a lot of things with the press release, right? Because a lot of it is a lot of this stuff be speculation too, and it's printed out as facts. You know, uh, like even when they was even when they were speaking about the whole, you know, PI possibly not having a team. And that was like the big thing. And then all of a sudden it's like, boom, like we're having a team. I don't even know where that information come from. You know, like, you know, what I'm saying? True. So it's just one of them things. It just depends on, you know, like, like good old buddy Trump says that fake news. Nah. <laughs> you know, like yes, you're very just really somebody print stuff and, you know, just something to get fellas ruffled or something to talk about. So, I mean, it, you never know. You know, like I said, that's why I always say, you know, you never know. I was not, I'm never on, we're not on those phone calls or those yeah, at all, no. So we don't We're not cutting the really, checks. Yeah, we don't know what's going on, so. Because like yeah. you said, for some of these guys, it's a hobby. So for them, if they say, what? We can't afford it. What are you talking about? I don't really care. I didn't, yeah. have, I didn't have a problem paying the bills. Yeah, yeah. so it's just, you know. I don't know. On the other end of the spectrum, we got an owner who wants to leave, who's getting upset with sour grapes here, Elvin, about the way the salary cap violations have been going down. Um, there was no real, in, like there was some under the, he was making hints at, there was some under the table handovers, some money being passed over that wasn't actually on the salary cap books for certain players. I'm not going to name the players, but I don't really, it's not my information to really pass over. To me, when I, while I was reading it, I found it was very sour grapes, just, hey, this is bullshit. Because, I don't know, he's making accusations that players are getting paid under the table, and at the same time, he better not be doing it on his end because if he's doing it on his end, then got his sheets are just as dirty, righty? Yeah, but I mean, it goes back to one of them things. You know, we we both, you know, say let's do dirt, but you do your dirt a little <laughs> better than me, and I'm pissed <laughs> off about it. You know, it's just, uh, it's like you say, man. It's, until you have legit proof or you can prove it, I mean, to just start throwing names out and saying that this place is doing this and this that place is doing that, then I mean, that's that's. It's not a good look. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. It's not a good look from, you know, from like an individual standpoint or as an organization and as an owner. You know, that's not a good look because at the end of the day, in order for this thing to work, owners have to pretty much get together. We don't have to like each other. Now. Mm-hmm. I don't have to like you, but I have to respect you enough to where we can, if it's a problem, we can sit down and we can hash this out. You know, well, let's as, say as respectful owners and stuff like that, you know, but when you start doing that, you start attacking people, integrity, their character to, you know, it's, it's, it's above basketball. Then mm-hmm. It's above like what's going on. So you're telling me that I have to cheat the win and this, this and that. you know what I'm saying? It's just it ruffles a different fellow with that. Well, let's say <clears throat> I'm the Orangeville owner and I'm all pissy and bitchy instead of being all pissy and bitchy and kind of releasing this on Facebook and what have you. Would it be better to just go to you? Let's say you're an opposing owner and you're one of the ones I have a problem with. Wouldn't it be better to just bring it up at the no, owners' meetings and just say, "Hey, this is do. one of the things I got this, a problem with." This, that's exactly what you do. Like, don't, and then not go to the press you, because just, it seems like you're a pissy little bitch, no, right? It just it gives it gives outside influences, right? It gives everybody a chance to want to put their two cents in and say what's happening and what's not happening. And ninety nine point nine 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 percent of the people that are saying what's happening have no earthly idea what's really going on, you know. Half of the people that are saying what's going on and what's happening are the same ones that was PO'd at Magley because he wasn't explaining the rules. The same <laughs> ones that was PO'd with him because, you know, it wasn't a handout with the with the the I the injury reserve list. And you know, I mean dude, like seriously it's 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 so it's to the point to where it's like even once they get to that point, like you have some people that think that they should know what players make. And things like that, mm. you know what I'm saying? Like that way, you 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 have to draw a fine line as an owner and stuff, right? If you, if I have an issue and I think rules are being broken amongst the owners, then when we have our owner meeting, that's going to be something I bring up amongst the owners. We hash that out in whatever like boardroom that we're in. If I have a problem, if I think it's direct, if I think it's you. That's what I'm going to tell you in the owner's meeting. Yeah, I'll say, oh, I, but I think you're fucking yeah, paying people under the table. That's what I would say in the owner's meeting. You know, it's no – remember when we was discussing this with basketball, with players, right? If I got a problem with you, I'm not going to go to the media with it. We're going to go in the locker room and we're going to hash this problem out. I'm going to come right to you. Mm-hmm. You know, like it's just a way that you go about it. And to go to the media with it is just – because when you go to the media, you you start – what happens then is – 
innocent people start being accused of being guilty, kill it to people or the innocent ones. You know, it's just it's pretty much who likes who to who's doing it then, right? You know, oh, well, I don't like I don't like St. John, so yeah, they are doing it. Well, I don't like Mark. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they're doing it. Well, you know, well, such and such, Lancers are my favorite team. I know they wouldn't do that. You know what I'm saying? And <laughs> it's just all that kind of stuff. You get what I'm saying? Oh, like, yeah, it yeah. just opens up that door, right? So it's like, you got a problem and you think somebody's doing something, go to them. Hash up. We're having, a, we having our owner's meeting. Bring it up. That's what the owner meetings are for. Isn't that, yeah, that's what you would want to have yeah, so you bring that it up exclusivity like, for. Don't have an owner's meeting and, and you send a, a church mouse about it and then, Two weeks later, boom, it's in the <laughs> media. You're like, dude, if you're feeling like that now, you was feeling like that then. You know what I'm saying? It's so true. It's just, you know, like, I don't agree with it, you know. And like, where's he going to leave, Elvin? He says he's going to go. Is he going to join Butch Carter's league? Is he going to go join the, uh, I think it's Basketball League of Canada, know. whatever the hell they wanted to call themselves? Know. Or is he going to join the uh, Magley's new league, the NBA PB? Yeah, I don't know. I mean, but either way it goes, like, you're going to – Either way it goes, man, it's, it's either it's like a put up or shut up as an owner, right? Like, you, you either have to, you're going, it, and the thing about it, you have a lot of places, and I'm not saying this place in particular, but you have a lot of places that w- is, you're going to get what you pay for, you know? So, if you say, okay, I, my top player only wants to pay this minimal amount, then you're going to get that minimal amount you're gonna caliber You're going to get a $4,000 player, true. You're going to get these players that, you know, fresh out and they're just looking. For, they, don't, they haven't landed nothing overseas anywhere else, so they come there. You're going to get players that's been rejected in different places, and they're going to come there. You're going to – that's what's going to happen. You're going to get that caliber player. You know, if you play – you know what? If you're trying to get a $10,000 a month no, player, that's what you're going like to have to do, right? Saying, yeah, it's like, you know, you can't say, okay, well, you know, our salary cap is X amount of dollars, but I want to stay, you know, ten, fifteen thousand under that. <laughs> you get what I'm saying? And then expect to put together a championship no. team when no. you have a player, when you have somebody say, "Oh, our salary cap is this," I'm gonna use every red cent of that. You know what I'm saying? Like, and make it happen. So, yeah, oh, I just, agree. Yeah, that's just something that you just, you know, you you bring it up in the owners' meeting, you keep it there, and you tr- and you try to fix it there, man. And go to the media with it. Like, I, I don't, I'm, I'm not a fan of that. Yeah, you think that's where it would get to, but oh, well, what can you? Yeah, maybe they'll join Butch Carter. <laughs> They're playing out of universities. I don't know. Yeah. I don't get it. Anyways, Canada won the William Jones Cup. They finished with a record of seven and one. Good job to Garrett Williamson and all the other representatives for Team Canada. That's yeah, pretty neat for us. It's pretty well, neat. Man, I'm a two G Will when I then got him one man. Yeah, congratulations to him. But hey, like I said, man, that's not the. That's not that's not the pop of the situation <laughs> right there, man. Big shout out to my guy Jeff Lamb went over and yeah. got him one. He come back with the hard well, man. That's what I'm talking about, Jeff. But uh, Jeff yeah, was man. an athletic trainer for hey, the Lightning. Hey, yeah, Jeff's just a good dude, man. Just all around, <laughs> man. I'm just like you, just, dude's just so excited, man. You know, like you know, he just he was excited, man. He's like. He went and got the hardware. I know that's gonna be we go. We play poker like every side. He's gonna be wearing it like hey, Kurt Angle. Have, hey, dude, he gonna have it on his head like you know. He gonna <laughs> he gonna have it wrapped around his neck. You know what I'm saying? He's gonna be like Kurt hey, Angle. Wear that shit. I'm gonna be surprised if he feel good about a hand and he slide the gold medal in there. I'm all <laughs> man with the, gold, with the gold medal. Nah, man, that was a good job by those dudes, though, man. Like um. You know they they play well. You know I, you know they you beat the it. shit out of Japan. Yeah, they play well. So it's just you know. Maybe there's nothing but good things from there. So well, yeah, and I hope like it never trans like anybody wondering. Oh wow, this is a this is a big step. I'm not trying to downplay it, but it's not going to be like oh wow. We should expect now to be a podium level team or maybe be Team USA or Australia or Brazil or Argentina or Spain. I mean, it's a step in the right direction. But we're going in the right yeah, direction. Yes, these the are the right tournaments direction. you should you should still be winning. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it's a step in the right direction. I mean, you you do that, and you know, you progressively, you know, better and better and better, and then eventually, you know, it'll happen. You know, it's just it's a process. You know, and that's just what it is. You you just, you build and then you go on from there, and then you know, one day y'all, it will be on the podium. You know, so hearing old Canada being played and. <laughs> over the loud system. Oh, so. yeah, that would be the day. So. Is Steve Nash going to come out of retirement then, Alvin? Oh, no, <laughs> the great Nash. white hope. Uh, Steve Nash might just go out there. His nose might just start bleeding. Like, you know, Steve Nash, like, he catch a nosebleed drinking water. 
<laughs> he's better than I think he's the best white point guard ever. Better than Pete Maravich, John Stockton. Okay, and that's probably you know what I'm gonna tell you something. I'm not gonna argue with you with that one because that's your opinion. You're entitled to that. Best that's player. What make, that's what makes the world. Best go player around. to not win a championship. That's Would you agree, the, Elvin? That's what makes the world go wrong. You Would know, you agree, Elvin? Opinion. Steve Nash is the I, best I just player. Said it's your opinion. I'm not gonna argue. Yeah, with I'm just wondering. Not. Would yeah. you agree though? No, I wouldn't. What? Bye, bye. Ten strokes of the madness. Even the name that you just called, Pistol Pete. Come on, dude, stop it, man. Stop oh, it. God, Pistol Pete, is... Jerry West. Yeah, you, you... Larry Bird. I guess yeah. All Larry, the Boston guys are like, "What the fuck, dude? Yeah, man, right. Larry Bird's the Tony, best guy." Tony Kukoc, Steve Kerr. Whoa, 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 whoa! Steve, Steve Nash Kerr. is better than Steve Kerr. I'm giving it to Steve Kerr, man. What the I'm hell? Give it to Steve Kerr. Like I said, Steve Nash is the best player to never win a championship either, Alvin. Yeah. Uh, Okay, we'll leave it at that, man. Wouldn't you think he's more acclimated than Charles Barkley? Yeah, Charles Barkley, Carl Malone. Hey, that dude. <laughs> hey, he, that's what I'm talking about, man. Reggie Miller. John Stockton. Yeah, dude, John Stockton. I mean, who are those guys? Put, get him out of here. Give me Nash. Tracy McGrady. <laughs> get him out of here and give me Nash. Heck, even Vince Carter, <laughs> to be honest with you. Yeah, so I'm just saying, you know. <laughs> well, actually, quick question. Tracy McGrady ranked better than Vince Carter in your books? Or is Vince Carter better? I say I I have to say Tracy McGrady. Really? Yeah, and I mean, don't get me wrong, Vince Carter is a hell of a player, but I think what happens is with a lot of people didn't appreciate Vince Carter's actual game because of all the dunking he did. The highlights, yes. you know. But when you look at Tracy McGrady, man, like that dude had the ball on the string. He could shoot the three off the dribble, mid range, Magic dunk on Johnson people. type. Yeah, like he was just he was Tracy McGrady was that dude, man. You know, like. And had it not been for those back, you know, those back issues and stuff, man. Like, and he had a bad knee, I believe. Yeah, he had the knee, but then he had, like, the back spasm. He was, like, always, you know, back, having a back spasm, dude. And like I said, if it hadn't have been for that, it would have been crazy to see, you know, what he would have done. You know what I'm saying? Because you got to think, Trace McGrady was done at, like, 32, you know, 30. Do you think he like, was one of the guys that should have actually went to university for a year or two? Or did it not? I don't no, know. Was that inevitable as back? Yeah. That was, that was just a certain stuff. Like, he just – one of the things. I mean, hell, he done went to university, man. His back would have probably started hurting worse before then. <laughs> like, all that running and stuff. Yeah, you doing up, man. So it's just like it's just I like I'm not taking anything from Vince Carter by any stretch of the imagination, but I have to give it to T Mac. Like that dude, he was I mean Vince Carter was he get buckets, you know, Vince Carter. Save you know, Toronto Raptors yeah, his franchise hundred percent. He can catch and shoot the three, take people off the dribble dunking, but T Mac No, was you're like, right though. T Mac was putting people in blenders like wherever from the three in. I I remember you know, talking like, to you about this and you're like, Well he's a six nine point guard and I was like, That's yeah, yeah, true. Yeah. Shit. Like he, he was, was a six like, nine point yeah, guard. And I do was a killer, man. So it's like you could put him one, two, three. You know, and it's like I said, easy. man, people forget like people like it's players like T Mac that Unless you're just or a, Grant a true, Hill, yes. Unless you're just a true fan of the game, you know what I'm saying of the game and not just of certain players. Like you, they'll understand what I'm saying when I say you. People can't will take, forget that Grant Hill was an all world player no, at one people point. People will forget that Grant Hill got more <laughs> votes than Jordan for the um, yeah All Star game, yeah. dude. Like that dude, Grant Hill before he his was ankle, almost the face of the NBA dude, before his ankle problems, dude. Man, Grant Hill was. Grant, I'm gonna tell you what Grant Hill was like. Grant Hill was like a more poised LeBron. Just not as big, yeah. He was, he was, but Grant Hill's like six eight though. No, you I know, mean, he uh, just wasn't as muscular. Wise, yeah. But that dude was like, he he come out, he gonna rebound, he grabbing boys, he's passing the ball, he he's dunking. Man, I'm anywhere. talking about can shoot. Watch highlights of him. Yeah, actually. Grant Hill was him in Detroit truth. with Jerry Stackhouse. Yeah, like, Grant Hill was the truth, man. Like, it sucked. It was very unfortunate when he went his, to Orlando. Yeah, yeah. And then he had those, you know, his ankle problems and stuff like that, and it was just reoccurring, reoccurring, and then mm-hmm. just surge after surge after surgery, man. So. Yeah, but Grant Hill was a beast, man. Mm. Yeah. But yeah. Anyways, Elvin, is Grant Hill gonna crack your two K roster? Because we're gonna play listen, a best of Selvin. Dude, listen, best man, of seven. I'm not revealing my roster, man. I'm not telling <laughs> I can't you. My get it out of him. I'm gonna go home. I'm gonna write it all down. I'm gonna put it in an envelope. He's got I'm gonna put it in an envelope. <laughs> I'm going to bring it in, and we're going to open it like it's the draft lottery. And we're going to open it up, and I'm going to unfold the paper, and we're going to wham. When you see it, I promise you, man, when you hear that, when that when that paper open, you're going to hear Angel sing. It's going to be like, oh, like that. It might a beam of light might come down on it and everything. Sure. <laughs> I should make mine all 
I should go with former Raptors since it's just such a historic franchise, right, Elvin? That's what you do. I'm talking about, dudes. You can't lose with with Keon Clark in the middle and Junkyard Dog at the four with Charles <laughs> right, Barkley. Right, 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 right. I mean, you got, I mean, you got Damian Stoudemire at the point. You said no with. What about Kyle Lowry? He's a better point guard. No, man, please, man. Jose no. called. No, I tell you what, it's, it's just it's, when we play, whether it be more regular season or playoff, because we know <laughs> we know Kyle Lowry pull a David Copperfield come playoff. He tell him out the gate, man. I only signed up for eighty two games. I'm not signing up for eighty three. My contract says eighty two games. I'm done after eighty two. Oh shit! Like, I don't care how far we go. Right, I'm not showing up. <clears throat> I don't know. I don't know. I'm I'm debating whether or not if I want because my player our players are going to be in it. Our my career my player players from two K. I got a secret assassin. Oh, he the, thinks the, he's got player. a something. I've got a great white hope in my own. Oh, my player, Wait till you see him, Alvin. No, and then maybe do I put Larry Bird out there, or do I use? I'm probably going to do Michael Jordan to be honest. Be a fool not to. I'm just I'm a, yeah. I'm gonna just let you use whoever you use, man. I don't, you know what, Ethan? I'm going to tell you how good I feel, man. I might just pick my team on the fly. He's going to do Larry Johnson. I watch pick, out. I might just pick my team on the fly, but I'm going to get the grandma Larry Johnson, though. Like the Charlotte Hornet uh, Larry Johnson. Man, my like, oh, yeah. yeah. All right. Actually, he was pretty good, actually. Larry yeah, Johnson. Yeah, I remember Larry him. Johnson was okay. Fell apart in New York, though. Yeah, but. Oh, well. It happens. But, anyways, yeah. So, if anyone's wondering, there's no salary cap, there's no, you know, player. Salary restrictions and rating restrictions, or oh, and you got Demar Derozan in the back up. You know he's gonna get upset because he's backing on Michael Jordan and you know that shit. No, no, no. It's just whoever you want, best of all time. Do I go with Patrick Ewing? I don't know. If David Robinson, maybe fundamentals with Tim Duncan. I can't tell you yet, Elvin. I don't know. I don't want you to tell me. I'm trying to decide my own style of play yet. I know it's gonna be gritty and hard. Oh. There's no flagrant fouls. <laughs> okay, man. Okay. And um, yeah, fifty bucks is on the line. Yeah, Ching. yeah, and yeah, we'll see who wins. We'll have it all set up. I'm gonna make a Twitch account, and we'll have that all figured out, and do some Facebook Live jazz. And yeah, that's about all, Alan. Um, yeah, we'll wrap it up from there. Oh, that's not good, man. Um, yeah, big shout out to my mommy, my daddy, my friend Marshall, my friend Mike, my friend Charlie. Um, everybody else listening, really thank you very much. Um, big shout out to our sponsors, Perennial Landscaping, uh, Pretty Picture Factory, Potter Payment Systems. And I want to give a big thank you to Morgan Howe, as well as Nadine Madawi for helping us out as well with our editing and tax needs. Like us on iTunes, like our Facebook page, and everybody have themselves a wonderful day. Choose the cards you was dealt. I hope you're moving on and feeling better about yourself. I show you how to move in a room full of vultures. I show you how to move in a room full of vultures. I know you didn't choose the cards you was dealt. I hope you're moving on and feeling better about yourself. I show you how to move in a room full of vultures. I show you how to move in a room full of vultures. Why they hating been aggravated for so long? Steady casting stones as I continue to roll on. Baby, you the best that's so far gone. I got no one to call. Can't let bygones be bygones. I'm half back playing time waste. I'm Johnny Depp in the ninth gate. I put you in my mind state. I'm all right, your mans can't concentrate. Study the moves they make. Every card I'm playing here is high stakes. Know when to hold them in, know when to fold them. In a room full of snakes, eyeballs and bread on your plate. And though I focus on the Lord's will, I'm steady dancing on the devil's heels. It's in my ear, let's make a deal. Illuminati want my mind, soul, and my body. I trade it all for a new Bugatti. A good do a good cry. Qualities. Look how far I got in me, trying to make it out the game and trying to win the lottery. I know you didn't choose the cards you was dealt. I hope you're moving on and feeling better about yourself. I show you how to move in a room full of vultures. I show you how to move in a room full of vultures. I know you didn't choose the cards you was dealt. I hope you're moving on and feeling better about yourself. I show you how to move in a room full of vultures. I show you how to move in a room full of vultures. Show you how to move to get through the street struggle. It's like I'm lifting weights but ain't gaining no muscle. Every day you hustle, want cream to escalate. Mom, do. Dukes won't nominate, cause she can't tolerate, is it hate or fate? Me and the devil got a date at eight to crush dreams, plan schemes, and run from Jake. Soon to be sold out tapes, unlimited pace. If kids
kiss and Don P. Bare footed, we crush grapes. Superheroes rocking capes, coach chefs baking them cakes. Mortgages with high rates, bets with high stakes. Everybody got a soul, but not everybody got love. Some cities might be safe, but every city got a thug. If you're hiding from the feds, all of your phones got a bug. Can't even trust your own blood when it's down to do or die. They look you in the eye, tell you a white lie. Life is crisscross, and there's always a witness. Your own mother could have your name on the hit list. Stay strong inside, you will survive. Keep them eyes open wide with herb to get you fried. My lyrics blew up the world and everybody just died. Kiss taking you on a ride like I was an exhibition. You want more? Make a decision at intermission. Rap song submissions, MC collisions. Kiss from CT with that 3D vision. I know you didn't choose the cards you yeah. was dealt. I hope you're moving on and feeling better about yourself. I show you how to move in a room full of vultures. I show you how to move in a room full of vultures. I know you didn't choose the cards you was dealt. I hope you're moving on and feeling better about yourself. I show you how to move in a room full of vultures. I show you how to move in a room full of vultures.